Hello everyone and welcome back to Prodigal Overland. My name's Brad. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not new and you're returning, welcome back to part two of Poison Spider Trail out here in Moab. Now, if you've not yet seen part one, I promise you, you're gonna wanna stop this video. I'll put a link up. Go watch the first part and then watch this video. Also, if you've not yet become a subscriber of this channel, consider doing so. Believe it or not, over 80% of the people that watch our videos aren't actually subscribers. If just a little bit of those hit that subscribe button, that would really help us out. So if you watch our videos on a regular basis and you've not yet hit that subscribe button, please, 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 please go ahead and do that for us. Um, without further ado, let's get going into part two of Poison Spider Trail. Once you get up on top of the mesa on Poison Spider Trail, the terrain kind of changes again. Kind of all throughout this trail, the terrain is a little bit different in each, every two to three miles. And so on top of the mesa, it's this mix of slick rock and sand. Another good thing to note is that as far as obstacles, once you're up top on the mesa, it's there's nothing too, too challenging. So there are some steep ascents, there is some sand, um, there was a, an area of deep sand that we kind of had to reverse and kind of go forward through again. Um, but definitely the hardest part was getting up to the mesa and then as you'll see later in this video, working our way down. All right guys, we did the loop on Poison Spider Trail. Little bumps and bangs so far, we're, we're keeping up pretty well. I don't think I'd wanna do much harder than this in the Grand Cherokee. Definitely a lot of these little uh, 
step ups, little mini walls that you can work your way up. There are a lot of bypasses. There is not a bypass on the waterfall section, um, but just about, I think that's the only one you can't bypass, but we, uh, we've we pretty much been doing all of them. So we were looking at some harder trails out here, but after today, I feel like maybe we'll hold off on that. One thing to note about longer trails like this, especially one that, at least for me, um, because we have a little bit less ground clearance, not a little bit, we have less ground clearance than the Gladiator that we were with, you have to pay attention to kind of every little piece of rock and, and obstacle and step. So what's an obstacle for me wasn't necessarily an obstacle for the Gladiator. And so it was kind of after we had made the climb and done the loop and started our way back down that I was going through just a little bit too fast on kind of a ridged section of slick rock and ended up really banging my lower front guard. So we had to stop. It just looks like we sprung sprung a leak here. Yeah. Hit hit the front guard pretty hard. And we think pretty confident it's just the windshield wiper fluid. But it is most definitely dripping. So we were able to confirm by looking closely that what had happened is the lower front guard actually kind of got bent in and cracked the very bottom of the windshield wiper bottle fluid. Um, still haven't fixed that yet. I need to fix that. Um, probably we'll try to just repair the crack. Hopefully I don't need a complete new bottle. So now we're back at the top of the waterfall, getting ready to go down. And we're wondering if we're going to be able to get out of here without a, losing our bumper completely. Once we were able to confirm that it wasn't my coolant that was leaking, we continued down the trail because there wasn't really any other way out. Um, and so what you're going to see here is us coming down the waterfall section. You're going to see just exactly the difference between a gladiator and me in this section. Obviously, with the increased articulation of the gladiator, four wheels for him mostly stay firmly planted on the ground. And what you're going to see from me is periods where we have one tire off and, and even two tires off the ground, and I start doing what I like to call my seesaw effect. Looks good. Take it slow. We're gonna try a different line. Going down, nice and slow.
Coming up in this next section, you're going to see me get really, really chippy. So when that happens, we'll kind of take a time out and we'll kind of talk through what's going on in this situation, what to do and what not to do. So he's fine. <laughs> Two? Better 50 50. Well, I guess 3 50 50. I don't know. Just go slow. Go slow. Gonna hit rail right there. And underbelly. You're okay, just pleading. Okay, let's stop it right here, do a little freeze frame, and point out a couple of things. Okay, obviously my back end is way up off the ground. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I'm also rocking forward towards my passenger side. Now, depending just how much further travel I have on that front passenger side is going to determine whether or not I'm about to flip over or not. Now, seeing as how I'm in the driver's seat, I can't tell what's under that front passenger tire. This is why it is so important that the person standing in front of you, in this case Dwight, has a really good understanding of what could potentially happen in just a split second, okay? For instance, if I were to move forward in this, and let's say there is a deep hole there, I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna roll on my side, I might roll to a 360, things are going to get bad really, really quick. So it's just important who is ever in front of you understands the situation just as well as you do. Now, another thing to note here is this is not the time you just want to kind of power through or keep going. When you feel a seesaw action occurring, this is a moment for pause to just stop that everybody understands what could happen here. Now, this particular day, normally Lauren's in front and she's spotting, so I know she kind of has seen me in this predicament a couple of times and understood kind of the severity of what might happen. Um, in this case, I was just really looking at Dwight, hoping that he, he completely understood that I didn't have the travel and articulation he had. When people flip their cars in spots like this, usually they do one of two things, or two of two things, okay? When you're tipping this direction, so I'm going forward and away from myself, your natural reaction is to turn the steering wheel towards the driver's side or towards the left because you're trying to steer out of what's happening. This is the complete opposite of what you need to be doing in that situation. If I were to pull my steering wheel all the way left here, that little bit of support I have under my front passenger tire is going to go away because that tire is going to move towards the driver and take away my base of support. What you need to do in this situation is hit the brakes and move your tire as far or to the passenger side because you want that tire to stick out and give you just a little bit of support. The other thing to do is if you don't have a spotter in front of you or if you've never been in this situation, this is a great time to keep your foot on the brake, shift into reverse, and with your left foot on the brake and your right foot on the gas gently reverse out of the situation and go back to a spot where you're safe and reassess your line. 
Another quick thing to take note is my youngest son up there on the cliff wall. Um, Sammy likes to explore, and while I was trying not to roll our family vehicle, he was busy putting himself in a situation um, that maybe wasn't the best spot for him to be in, but we'll get to that later. So here's Sammy up on that cliff wall. Um, Sammy loves to explore. This time he got himself up just a little too high and couldn't figure out how to get down safely. So I had to try to scoop in and use my ninja-like climbing skills to save him. You're okay. Can you turn around and get on your butt and slide down to dad? Sorry, what's it? Yeah, right? Sorry. <laughs> we weren't sure if we'd see you again. <laughs> After this dump, slow, good, and then you're good to go. Woo, we made it down the falls, woohoo! I don't know if you can see how close we are here to the edge. <laughs> wouldn't do that. Just kissed it. Good job. Yeah. It's our last big obstacle and um, my nerves are done.
You're on the, you're on that rock. I don't know. I might have something there. Okay, everyone, we made it in mostly one piece off of Poison Spider. We were able to do the whole trail, and really, for the most part, we kept up with the Gladiator and did the same lines. Now, as far as this trail goes, if you've got a Grand Cherokee and you're thinking about running it, man, you wanna be fully decked out. Our rear bumper, again, took a hit and kinda went off. It's a long trail. This trail is almost 14 miles round trip, 14, 15, something like that. Um, so, and we also have a bit of trail damage. So <laughs> the trail damage from today, let's tally it up, okay? Rear bumper, which is no big deal. That's been off and on. We need the bumper protector from Chief Products for that. That's the fix for that one. I hit my lower front guard pretty good and on the driver's side, I believe, and it punctured our windshield wiper fluid bottle. That was dripping all over the ground. So that was fluid there. And now for an added bonus, we're smelling gas. So not a good sign. I'm pretty sure I've got a, a gas leak somewhere in the line. We went through more gas than I think we should have on that trail. So we're gonna try to get back home and hopefully there'll be gas in the truck tomorrow and or at least when we need to drive it again to try to get it into a shop. So Poison Spider is a ton of fun but definitely pushing the upper end of the Grand Cherokee's capabilities, in my humble opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully there'll be more videos to come from Moab. I think we're gonna need to get the, the Jeep into the shop here a little bit, give it a once over, make sure everything's okay. So hopefully that can get taken care of quickly. Anyway, you're gonna wanna stick around, hit that subscribe button if you've not hit it already, um, because I'm sure we're gonna have some interesting videos coming up today or after today as we try to figure out what's going on with the trailhawk so leave a comment below give a thumbs up if you like it those things really help us and we'll see you guys again real soon i wanted to give you guys just an update on the whole gas situation with the jeep grand cherokee so at the end of this video we were definitely smelling a strong scent of gas and i couldn't figure out where it was coming from i was picking a lot up at kind of the tail end at the exhaust area but then also kind of up front under the hood so what we ended up doing was just driving it home letting it sit and i figured if there was a leak somewhere that i would be able to see that the next morning that the gauge would drop or something like that so the next morning i came out the fuel gauge was right where i had left it and i didn't see any dripping under the jeep from anything that looked like gas um, so we've driven it quite a bit since then and best as I can figure I think just because of how off camber we were and how much of coming down Poison Spider we were kind of prolonged and very steep uh, decline so the hood of the car and the engine would have been kind of really down and off to the side thinking that we either weren't burning the gas properly in the engine or things were getting a little bit flooded on the way down um, but I'm happy to report that the smell went away, there wasn't a leak, and everything seems to be fine. Thank goodness. So, you're gonna stick around next week. Next week, we are going to show you Hell's Revenge. We ran Hell's Revenge with a few other guys. I um, hope you guys like this video. If you, again, if you've not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys again real soon.